Hey everyone, I'm here today with my review of Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Now Red Rising is the first book of the Red Rising trilogy. It's followed up by Golden Sun and Morning Star. Now if you've never read it before, um, I have six words for you. Harry Potter, Hunger Games, in space. Now you might be thinking, what do those things have to do with each other? And why? And what are you talking about? Just read it. Like if you haven't read it yet, just stop what you're doing and just read it. So admittedly, I'd had this on my Kindle for the longest time, but I'd never gotten to read it. Plenty of people recommend it to me over and over again. And this past week, I finally looked at my Kindle for something to read, found it and started it and Boy, does it not let you go. So first of all, our main character called Darrow is something called a low red. He is essentially a member of the lowest part of society. This is our society, but hundreds of years into the future. So we've spread out from Earth and we've started to colonize planets like Mars. Now Earth is dying in this future. And reds like Darrow work underneath the surface of Mars to mine something called helium-3, which will allow Mars to be habitable on the surface. And they were told over and over again that obedience, sacrifice, loyalty are the highest virtues, and that all this hard work will lead to them being able to live on the surface of Mars and soon enjoy the fruits of their labor. Now, Darrow is 17 years old. He is something called a hell diver. He's married, works in the mines. Let me tell you, the oldest person here is like 30. It's a very rough life. They work in something called fry suits, which have no catheter. They have no outside um, exhaust or anything like that. They have a mechanism to breathe, but they're essentially working in their own waste for hours on end underneath the surface, you know, facing things called pit vipers, which are venomous snakes. A high fatality, very dangerous job for these essentially kids. So reds like Darrow, they are at the bottom rung of society. Society altogether is organized in tiers of colors. There are people who are golds who have been bred for hundreds of years to be the strongest, most intelligent, and they rule over all of the rest of society. And it goes down from there. Coppers are essentially police people. Whites are doctors. There are pinks, which are prostitutes and other masseuses and things like that. And then there are reds, which are, like again I said, very bottom of society, working in these very high danger jobs. So, Here's the big one. As we get into the story, we realize that Mars is already colonized on the surface. Golds and other colors of humanity are living happily in civilized cities. There are rivers, there are oceans, there are woods, there are animals living on the surface of Mars. It is already green and habitable. For hundreds of years, Darrow and his ancestors have toiled beneath the surface, needlessly not being told any of this and essentially just being exploited as free slaves. But this is the beauty of Red Rising. Darrow infiltrates their ranks as a member of the Gold Society. He gets accepted into something called the Institute, which is essentially an academy for the richest, the so-called best of the gold. These kids are the sons and daughters of the rulers of planets, commanders of star fleets, the most important people in our solar system, uh, which is already well colonized, by the way. So the hundreds of other students are sorted into 12 houses. This is where it kind of gets like Harry Potter, but only in, in kind of a loose sense. And these houses are based on the old Greek gods like Pluto, Ceres, Apollo, and of course Mars. And they are dropped into a landscape, given a map within their house, and told develop civilization or become slaves to the other houses. And while killing their fellow students is discouraged, as we see, it's not really punished. Certain people can get away with it in certain situations based on what the proctors want. Of course, no one tells Darrow that the game is rigged from the start. The Proctors have chosen winner, 
and it's certainly not him, so I don't want to spoil anything else. But I can tell you if you like non-stop action, high stakes, a fight for justice, and some commentary on class struggles, something that pulls you in and just doesn't let you go, this is the read that you need to start. Seriously, I could not stop reading it. Alright, thanks for tuning in. If you like this review, please make sure to subscribe, and as always, don't forget that I have some free audiobooks of my own on this channel. See you later!